Well, thank you very much. Uh, for me, it is an honor to be here, and especially with a wonderful audience. Uh, my native language is Spanish, and my English is my second language, so please apologize for any you know, uh, mistakes in, in my presentations. Uh, well, um, I'm a tropical forest engineer. That's my background, but what is a tropical forest engineer anyways? Well, uh, I study the forest, I study the ecosystems and the landscapes, and I try to understand, you know, how it works. And then, like, I try to apply the ecological principles into human environments, into human ecosystems. So that's basically the core of my, you know, profession. And I'm also the director at the UGA Costa Rica campus. Yes, University of Georgia, in, from the state of Georgia, has a satellite campus in Costa Rica. And um, the campus is not only you know, for students from the University of Georgia, but also for anyone, you know, who wants to go and learn about the cloud forest and learn Spanish and learn about, you know, the biodiversity that we have in, in, in my country, okay? So, uh, where is Costa Rica? Some people call, some people say that Costa Rica is the belly button of the Americas, okay? <laughs> because it's right there in the very middle of, of the Americas. And it's like this tiny, you know, land bridge that connects North America with South America. Um, Costa Rica, more in detail, is uh, between Nicaragua and Panama, and between the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. Costa Rica is a very, very, very small country, very small. I mean, in fact, um, Costa Rica fits almost four times in the state of Oklahoma, okay? We have 4.5 million people, uh, you know, almost a million more, a little bit more than a million more than, than the whole state of Oklahoma. But, like, look at the size of the U.S. It's 305 million, okay, in terms of the, you know, population. Um, basically, um, some of the economic activities that we have in, in, in Costa Rica is tourism, okay, uh, agriculture, technology, and services. This too, you know, happened mostly in the center of Costa Rica, in the capital city where the metro area is. And tourism and agriculture happens outside the metro area, okay? Uh, from the total population, about 50% live in the, in the metro area in San Jose, and the other 50%, uh, including myself and my family, uh, we live in the more rural areas, okay, of Costa Rica. A um, little bit about social aspects of, in Costa Rica, basically, we are Spanish and Indian, native Costa Rican descendants. Uh, our mm, native language is Spanish. Uh, we are a democratic republic. And we also, you know, are a very peaceful nation. Like, we abolished the army in, back in 1949, okay? So that's something uh, very remarkable that happened in our history because since then, our country, um, opposite from other countries around the world, since then, we have been investing the money that will go into the army but to education and healthcare. So, for example, in Costa Rica, the healthcare system is, is free, and the education system up to high school is also uh, free or very, very inexpensive. Um, basically, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to show you these facts about Costa Rica, basically to give you an introduction, you know, so that you have more uh, background. Because in reality, you know, uh, the focus of my presentation is the, the ecology and uh, natural history and conservation of a very special ecosystem, which is the cloud forest, okay? The cloud forest is one of the many types of ecosystems that we have in Costa Rica. But uh, in essence, kind of like to open the door into the, you know, the core of this presentation, I would like to also talk about some of the environmental, you know, characteristics of our country. We have very strict environmental policy. I mean, we're such a small country, and what we have is our territory and our people, okay? We have our biodiversity, we have our landscapes, and we have our people. And like, you know, the, my ancestors have done a lot, okay, in order to preserve, in order to, to give a very good, or a, a, let's say a healthy uh, heritage, you know, to future generations, including myself and, you know, uh, the future generations that will come, will come along. 25% um, of the country is protected in national parks and reserves, uh, which is a, is a very significant portion for a very small country. Imagine, you know, having 25% of the state of Oklahoma, like, reserve in protected areas, basically, for protecting the, 
the biodiversity and the ecosystems. We have four major types of land macroecosystems or, or biomes. Um, we host 5% of the world's biodiversity in this tiny little country, 5% of the world's biodiversity. And we have 12 out of the 38 life zones, okay? So given these characteristics, you know, uh, I want to open the door to the, to the center, to the core of my presentation, which relates to the ecology and uh, conservation and natural history of uh, the cloud forest. Well, but before we understand, you know, before we talk about, you know, the details of natural history of conservation and all of that, uh, it is important to understand the geology and the geography of, of our territory. Basically, starting with the geology, you know, Costa Rica is the product of te the tectonic plates, okay? We have the Caribbean plate here and the Pacific plate. And these two plates have been, you know, like fighting against each other pretty much, and that has created, you know, many, many volcanoes that all of this like uh, brown and light green uh, features here in the map are basically volcanoes, okay? So it's the land of volcanoes. <laughs> you know, we have, uh, well, active volcanoes and unactive, inactive volcanoes all throughout the country. Uh, when these volcanoes explode, okay, they produce a lot of material, okay, a lot of ash and a lot of igneous rocks, okay, which are volcanic rocks. And uh, when, when the weather, you know, when the, when the rain, because that's another characteristic, it rains a lot in Costa Rica, like uh, in some areas, for example, um, excuse me, up here, it rains like six meters of water. Okay, I'm almost two meters. Imagine like three times my height, okay? It goes above in one square meter. So <laughs> it's a lot of water. Where I live, it's pretty humid, but it doesn't rain, rain that much. Like uh, I live up here in Monteverde, like right by the volcano, Arenal volcano, and it rains only, you know, only three meters, okay? <laughs> Okay, so what happens, you know, when we have like a lot of ash, accumulated ash, and a lot of um, igneous rocks, okay, the weather, the rain, the wind, basically erodes the, the landscape. And uh, it produces, it, through, you know, many, many years, it has produced the, uh, you know, the, the, the accumulation of soils here in these flat areas, okay, in the northern plains and the Caribbean plains in the southern plains and in the northern plains of Costa Rica. So it is, Costa Rica is in reality a place that is very diverse in terms of its geography, which is a result from, from the ge geology and the geologic history of, of uh, our territory. So another, you know, slide that shows the background, okay, about the, the core of, of our presentation is this. Uh, this, um, with this slide I want to show the importance of migration, okay? We are, you know, there, migration is probably one of the most um, incredible uh, phenomena that happens in the world, okay? And this graph, you know, shows the different biomes of, of the, in the world. And, and basically what I want to show you here is that, okay, so Costa Rica, like you see this light green, okay? This light green and a little bit of uh, dark green and a little bit of blue. Actually, it doesn't show the blue because, it's because of the scale of the map, but there is a little bit of blue too. Costa Rica is actually a, a place that has a lot of affinity in terms of the ecosystems, in terms of like the type of biodiversity that exists there to the Amazon, okay? To the Amazon and to the Andes, okay? And a little bit to the, you know, like um, more deciduous tropical dry forest that exists here in the um, northern part of Central America. So essentially, this land bridge, like from here, from southern Mexico to, you know, uh, northern Colombia and Panama, has been connecting, okay, North America with South America for only three and a half million years, okay? So that's a very short amount of time, okay? And so basically, that gives you a huge conclusion. A lot of the biodiversity that we find up here, okay, um, that 5% of the world's biodiversity that we find here in Costa Rica either came from North America or from South America. And that's why you see, you know, like the huge, like very, very prominent affinity with uh, the two macro continents um, that are, you know, North and South. Another advantage that we have 
and another you know that basically provides a lot of room for species to speciate and to you know diversify so much is that we are only 10 degrees north from the equator okay the uh, latitude here in Tulsa does anybody know I believe it's like 30 35 40 about okay but being thir only 30 degrees north from the equator provides us with a very constant climate okay so the species that live here including like humans we don't have to go to let's say through the, the strong seasonality that you suffer here or then that, that you not suffer but that you experience here in, in well suffer okay if you, if you say it um, that you experience here in in uh, in the in the temperate areas both in the northern hemisphere and the, in the southern hemisphere and so a lot of the species that live there I mean like in reality uh, they have you know one of the most perfect you know environmental um, you know place one of the places with the most uh, ideal okay environmental conditions for them to speciate you know and become new species and, and follow the the theory of uh, evolution through natural selection or through any other <laughs> theory that might exist um, so with that background you know when we combine all of this like geology and geography and rainfall and temperature and uh, position from the equator etc this is what we get we get a place that has like not only rainforests okay not only rainforests but also you know cloud forests up here in the mountains on top of the volcanoes uh, dry forests here in the northern part of Costa Rica and then all sorts of transitional you know microclimates and therefore transitional uh, life zone what is a life zone basically a life zone is is an area okay that shares similar environmental characteristics such as um, precipitation such as humidity such as uh, potential evapotranspiration and I'm sorry for the technical word but <laughs> evapotranspiration is basically adding the evaporation of the water from the surface of any any surface and the transpiration of the plants okay when you add those two and then like you do a ratio with the amount of rainfall okay like that's some that's a, an indicator for uh, you know an environmental indicator that help us determine uh, what a, the life zone in, in a specific location okay so when we have a diverse you know geology a diverse geography a, a, you know very interesting very mild let's say environmental conditions that don't go to the extremes as, as it happens in temperate areas you know this is this is what you get and you know here is uh, another opportunity to make a connection between Oklahoma and Costa Rica because essentially here in Oklahoma I was looking at the map that uh, uh, Patty gave me this morning and uh, basically I saw that Oklahoma even though like I hear that it's a place you know before coming here one of the things that I heard from other uh, people that I know who have been in the states and who have studied you know here is that is the prairie is so flat is like you know very very you know uh, uniform let's say but when I see that map okay is in reality I mean like this is another co convergence zone okay like here many of the ecosystems that you have in the northern part of, of the, well I guess in, in the northern hemisphere in the Americas also you have them here which is something that for me is very interesting you know to make that connection between my country and you know Oklahoma so basically you know more in detail uh, this is you know one one way to visualize you know the diversity of life the diversity of ecosystems that we have in Costa Rica but um, I guess that that was a very wide okay a very broad introduction to the cloud forest because in reality the ecosystem that I really like okay and what are what I live is the cloud forest okay the cloud forests basically are um, forests that sit on top of the mountain ranges of Costa Rica okay 